My name is Jeffrey Frankel and I have shown students techniques to reduce the time answer questions in paper one of the IB chemistry exam at both levels, standard level and higher level. These questions are multiple choice, you have 90 seconds available for each question and you have no calculator. These techniques that I am about to show you will help you dramatically reduce the time needed to answer those questions correctly in maybe 30 or 40 seconds and in some cases even less, thus giving you extra time to do other questions within the paper. Another question about the covalent bond and you simply have to know that two elements that form a covalent bond are in most cases non-metals. And immediately you can go, ah, which statement is correct? It must be the elements are non-metals. You can check the others, well obviously sodium doesn't form covalent bonds. The two electronegativity value statements are clearly wrong. Fluorine has a very high electronegativity value and does form covalent bonds and therefore C doesn't make sense as an answer to the question and when elements have very different electronegativity values they usually form ionic bonds so D is not a valid answer either. The elements are non-metals and those are the ones that form covalent bonds. It is essential that you know the difference between covalent bonds, hydrogen bonds and van der Waals forces. It is also essential that you know which bonds or forces are broken when chemicals are vaporized. You have to know that when chemicals boil or melt, covalent bonds do not break. Covalent bonds do not break in melting and boiling. The only bonds that break in melting and boiling are hydrogen bonds and van der Waals forces. The other phrase that is sometimes given in these type of questions is the, w the word intermolecular. Intermolecular forces or bonds and that refers to hydrogen bonds and van der Waals forces and intramolecular and that refers to covalent bonds. So intermolecular are the bonds between molecules forces between molecules intramolecular are the bonds within molecules. Covalent bonds are intramolecular. Okay, so then it's easy to see what happens when ethanol boils or vaporizes. Uh, which, which bonds or forces are broken? Hydrogen bonds and van der Waals forces. Anything with covalent in it is out. Only hydrogen? No. Hydrogen bonds and van der Waals forces are broken when chemicals either melt or boil. As soon as you look at this question, you must know that carbon monoxide and H3O plus contain dated covalent bonds. So you're looking at this one, two and three, let's see. Now if you weren't too sure about the carbon monoxide, because that is an unusual structure, and you may not see it as often as is necessary in order to get you to realize it contains a dated covalent bond, you should at least know that this does not contain dated covalent bonds. 
this does not. So if one does not contain a data equivalent bond, one is wrong, then that is wrong, that is wrong, that is wrong, and you're back to C as the correct answer. Just this question comes as either a paper one question or a paper two question. In paper one, you're simply expected to recognize the correct answer. In paper two, you're expected to explain the correct answer. So, what do you, are you expected to recognize? You're expected to recognize immediately that water, even if you don't know what the melting points of these two are, the hydrogen sulfide and methane, you're expected to recognize that water has the highest, highest melting point, and it would also have the highest boiling point as well. If this were a paper two question, you'd be asked for the reason, and the reason is that water has hydrogen bonding whereas H2S and methane do not. And that's the, the reason why this has the higher melting point or boiling point. And the reason this one has a higher melting point than that, than methane, or a higher boiling point than that, is the same. The reason is van der Waals forces. The size of van der Waals forces increases with increasing molecular mass. This has a molecular mass of uh, 32 plus 2, which is 34, and this has a molecular mass of 16. And therefore, this will have the greater van der Waals forces holding the, holding the molecules together so that they require more energy to melt or to boil. When you look through these four, you've got to immediately realize that silicon dioxide is the giant covalent structure or macro molecular structure. Uh, the others you should know are uh, the ionic, ionic covalent. This is a giant covalent or covalent macro molecular. There are a few structures which you're expected to recognize immediately as covalent macromolecular or giant covalent and they are silicon dioxide, diamond, graphite and uh, fullerene or buckyballs as they're sometimes called and there are some others that you may come across such as polymers. This is a nice question about where you should immediately see positive ions and free moving electrons, the only one it could possibly be would be sodium, because these would be the sodium ions and lots of free electrons. And you do have a lattice of positive sodium ions, uh, and you have the free moving electrons, which are which give sodium the opportunity to conduct both electricity and heat. In the case of graphite, the electrons are free moving, but there are no positive ions present. In the case of sodium chloride and sulfur, there are no free moving electrons. Intermolecular hydrogen bonds. As soon as you see hydrogen bonds, you have to immediately think OH, and you look for the one that has the OH, and that is the answer. What is that? 10 seconds? 5 seconds? That's all it needs. The rest are irrelevant. And they clearly do not participate in hydrogen bonding. Thank you for watching. If you found this YouTube video helpful, please see my other YouTube videos. Thank you.